Welcome everyone here to the Smash Sport Show right here on Smash FM here on Lockdown Monday here in Melbourne. Of course, let's go out to our friends up in Queensland and speak with uh, one of our sponsored clubs up there. Of course, that is the Korean Elites Club Tigers. And of course, we got a very special guest on the show because uh, her team just come off a heart stopping one goal win over Bon Uni in the Ruby Series. And of course, uh, she joins us right now to tell us all about it. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. No worries. Well, I'll get you to introduce yourself and what position you, you play on the court. So my name is Emily Gage. Um, I play shooter on the netball court, mainly goal attack, but change in between goal attack and goal shooter. Well, two from two from both your teams uh, on the weekend. Obviously, your Sapphire absolutely demolished the Bull Sharks. Um, in the Sapphire series, but your team had a bit of a struggle against the Bull Shards in the Ruby series. Um, only win by a goal. Tell us a bit about your game first, and then we'll talk about the Sapphire in the moment. Yep, so it was a nail biter of a game, only winning by one goal. Um, in the end, we were winning by a little bit more throughout the game, but uh, we had a lapse in the last quarter and they clawed their way back, but we still ended up winning by that one point. We won three out of the four quarters, which was quite good as well. And I just like to say a win's a win. doesn't matter how ugly it is. Now, the one thing I've actually learnt from uh, entering uh, some of the other clubs as well is that um, you actually get points for winning a quarter. How important is it to win quarters as well as win the whole game? Yeah, so that was a new thing that they brought in maybe two years ago. So even if you win the whole game, but you lose three out of those four quarters, you won't you won't walk away with maximum points. So I think the maximum amount of points you can walk away in a game is 18 points. And you really want to grab all of those points because up on the ladder, that can really dictate in the top four, whether you're out of the top four, and it's just really a game changer. So... You didn't quite get the maximum points by the sounds of it last weekend because uh, completely failed the last no. quarter. Uh, how good were at least to get a win to move on to the game uh, coming up against QUT this weekend? Yeah, I think it was really good to know that even though Bull Sharks did step up their pressure, we still were able to handle it and walk away with the win. Doesn't matter that we lost one quarter, we can still walk away knowing that we won, but we can also walk away knowing that what we need to improve on that quarter really show where our weaknesses are, what we can improve on looking forward to our QUT game this week. Uh, now I know your Sapphire series on the other hand, uh, absolutely put the cleanest through uh, Bon Uni in their game. Uh, tell us a bit about that game. If you, and I guess how much of the game did you end up watching? Yeah, so unfortunately I couldn't stay and watch, but luckily because their games are live streamed, I was on YouTube watching their game, cheering them on the whole way. Um, for me, I, it just really looked like they were, they showed up. They were a team that was just bringing it to the Bond Bull Sharks. I don't think they expected them to come out that firing and it was really good to see that they absolutely annihilated them. Now, I think that's almost their biggest win they've had this season. Uh, yeah. Winning fairly big against a top four team. Uh, I think they won by about over 30 um, at the end. Uh, I guess how good is it to have both teams winning on the same weekend, which happens, uh, I think probably only the second or third time it's actually happened. Um, to uh, And I must say, how good will Trey be this week? Yeah, it's always amazing when we can both walk away with a win. The culture is there and it just gives you that high moving on to your next game this week, knowing that you know what you're going to work on at training and now you have full confidence in that you can do it and bring on the coming week. Now, how's the preparation going to be like uh, this week after uh, last weekend? Um, definitely foot down train hard the intensity needs to be there and just uh looking at where our weaknesses are and how we can improve them so uh how difficult has this year been being the defending champs um i think you definitely have a target on your back but this year 
and you may have heard it from others as well. It's a completely new ball game. Normally I would say there's a top four and you know who the top four are, but this year I reckon it is anyone's game. All the teams is top quality girls out there and all the teams are just producing some awesome games to watch. Now I know this is gonna sound a really silly question to ask you, Anne, but obviously with mm. your one point one goal win that you've had against the Sharks and the Cougars fell as well um, on the weekend to I think close that gap within a game. I guess how important is the Nets this game, but obviously the game against the Cougars, which could decide top of the ladder. Yeah, definitely. Because obviously last time we came up against the Cougars, we had a loss. So we definitely want to go into the game in two weeks versus them or in next week versus them, having the confidence that we can walk away with that win. Uh, tell us a couple players in your team that's had an outstanding season so far and you cannot include yourself. No, <laughs> I would never do that. Um, I would say I really have to give it to our defenders. Like as an attacker, I know I highly rely on our defenders. They every week turn that ball over. So Cooley, Maddie Ryan, Georgia, and even some of our training partners, when they come in and fill, they turn that ball over to give us the best opportunity to win because we can't win if they can't turn that ball over. Uh, and for you, how do you think you're travelling this season yourself, Em? Um, I think so far I'm doing, I'm doing all right. There's definitely games where I can do a lot better, but that everyone has those types of games. But it's really just the team makes it so easy to play, which is good. We're always having fun out there, which at the end of the day is what we want. Now, tell us a bit about your coaches uh, there at the Tigers. Yeah, so this year we're lucky enough to have Joe and Justin join the Tigers for the first time. I absolutely love them. I think they have just brought some new energy to the Tigers. They came in and they just really told us what they wanted and we are all on the same page. And I always go to training excited to be able to learn something and know I'm going to walk away from training feeling like I've achieved something, which is good. And what have you learned from those coaches, Em? Um, definitely in terms of my own play is that I just like my intensity and little tricks and tips here and what I need to improve, but also the fact that it's important, particularly as a group sport to just have the unity as a team. So, uh, this year we've been throwing some hurdles, but it doesn't matter what those hurdles are. We're all going to come together and play as one, which is good. Now, how did you get involved in netball and why did you choose it? Um, I, I started at a pretty young age. I would probably say around about seven. My mom used to play netball and I remember we were driving home from diving and I go, when can I play the sport you play? She goes, next year. So I joined a netball team and never looked back. Don't know my life without netball now. And you might as well give your local junior netball club a bit of a shout out. And do you still go back to that netball club slash association? Yes, for sure. So my local junior netball club is Sharks Netball Club. Big shout out there who are in the Redlands. Um, I definitely do like to get down there sometimes. I can't say last year with COVID, it was definitely very hard. But when the finals roll around and I was even a couple of years back still umpiring down there, it's amazing just to see some of the new talent that's coming through, which is good. And it's always good atmosphere. And what will be some highlights right your netball journey so far, Emily? Um, I would say, well, one of my biggest highlights is that I was originally a defender. So I was all those defenders. The dream was to become a shooter. And that was my dream. And my biggest highlight was making it to be able to be a shooter. And I transferred to be a shooter. So now you're down the other end of the court. <laughs> Now, I know that uh, Tasha's down that end of the court, uh, which I know she's going to be in a couple of these responses later on in the interview. But uh, how good is to play alongside Tash? Yeah, amazing. Um, I don't know if you know this yet, but now she has been elevated to Sapphire team, which uh, yes. is awesome for her game. Yes, yes. 
So unfortunately, I no longer get to play with her. But the first uh, couple of weeks where we did get to play, it was it's just amazing. It's easy to work with her. The circle rotations are so much fun. And she's just full of speed, which is good. Now, considering she has been elevated, I completely forgot she has. Um, so I do apologize, Tasha, if you're watching this. Um, but uh, you must well tell us your two other goalers that you have down that end of the court. Yeah, so we have the two Graces, Hughes and Hamo. And Hughes is one of our, so she was in Sapphire. She's now with us, which we are so excited. She is super tall. We can use her height. It's such good to have a big, tall shooter in the circle. And then we have Hamo, who is just completely reliable. She holds really well. She's able to shoot with accuracy. So we have all that depth within our team as well, which is still very exciting. Now, what does the sport of netball mean to you, and especially being there at the Crown Elites Club Tigers? Um, for me, it's just about the culture. The Korean loves Korean leagues, club tigers. I definitely come back each year because the culture is so good. I go there because we like to play netball. We like to have fun, but at that high level, which is good. We know that our sponsors are always going to back us, which is good. And we always, they're always just there for us. Now, do you have any future ambitions in the sport of netball? My future ambition would be just to keep playing until I don't like it anymore. I play it because of the fitness and because I love playing netball. And I really want to keep playing until I'm old, if that's an ambition. <laughs> uh, and what would be your advice to people out there that should get involved in netball, especially at Metro and also Redlands Netball Association? Definitely just give it a go, give it a crack. You never know how good you're going to be. And even if you're not the best player, practice, 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 and you'll get there. If you want to play netball, you can play netball. Now, let's finish up with a couple of lighthearted questions about your teammates. Now, I've got a feeling Tasha's going to be at least in one of these based on what everyone else is so <laughs> far. Um, which is who had the most embarrassing moments on the court this season and what was it? Well, I have two that pop into mind. Obviously, Tash with the falling over. She just always falls over in every game, which is hilarious. But she does it in an athletic way. So she's always able to get up. And then the one that has come up quite recently is Madison Cooley. So... She has started to clap herself when she gets an intercept and it's just very hilarious to watch back. <laughs> She's going to hate me for saying that. Sorry, Cooley. <laughs> well, I just had on the show about two weeks ago. Um, so, um, now, here's the comedian in the team. Oh, I would like to say myself. No. Um, again, I would say Cooley. She is just an absolute crack. She makes everyone laugh. She always comes to training in the game and you're just laughing with her and at her sometimes. Now, any good singers or dancers we should know about? Oh, I would say Cooley's, Cooley's a pretty good dancer. And singers, I wouldn't say we have any singers in our team, but one to watch out for is Lexi. She's, a, she's not a very good singer at all. <laughs> Again, sorry, Lexi. I was, I was hoping but, you was gonna say, I was hoping you were gonna say she's one of the good things when you said that, but I didn't expect you to say the other way around. No, we're all, we're all pretty good singers. We're, I would say, we're all pretty good singers <laughs> when the music is up loud. <laughs> now, I know that your Ruby team is not into TikToks, so my question is, who's who is the best TikToker in the in the Sapphire series? Oh, this would have to be a fight between Alice, Lynette, Rihanna, and then Ali has kind of joined on board as well as the older kind of TikToker. So just so the younger girls are angry, I'm going to say Ali is the best TikToker to give her some <laughs> some hype up. Go, uh... Ali. 
Oh, Do it for the teachers. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what training's going to be like this week after watching <laughs> this, this one. Uh, yeah. Now, I have to ask uh, this one as well. Do you have a pre-game superstition or ritual? Um, not, nothing major. One of the things that I always like to do is I always have to have clean teeth. So before I leave, I always have to make sure my teeth are brushed. So that's like a superstition that I just have. But other than that, nothing like I have to have. I know Cooley has to have her little sweatbands and stuff like that, but nothing really for me, no. Well, that's become a bit normal, I've noticed, uh, brushing teeth before, yeah. uh, before a game. So um, that's all right. That's a pretty good one. Um, and do you have a pre-game song to hype the team up or yourself before a game? So we don't necessarily have one song. We have, so we nickname Erin. She always brings her speaker and we nickname him Stephen. So Erin always brings Stephen to the game and Cooley is on charge of the music. So she plays whatever it is, but it's something to hype us up. Each week it's something different, but it, it gets us going, which is fun. May I ask why, why the name of the speaker, Stephen? I have absolutely no idea, but I just go with it. It, it, it. Somebody said it, must have, and it's just flown. You don't even ask questions. You just, yeah, did you bring Stephen today? How special is to have Smash FM as one of your uh, one of your sponsors, especially from interstate? Yeah, it's super exciting, particularly to have uh, one of our first interstate sponsors. Just being able to get you guys on board, and knowing that the netball is reaching out there, and it's just it's super exciting. Your reaction when uh, you all got told that uh, you got an interstate sponsor? Oh, we were all super excited because obviously we have the Leagues Club who are amazing. They do a great job. But just having somebody different as well jump on board, knowing that, yeah, we have an interstate sponsor. It's super fun. It's super exciting. We were all very excited. Now, the last two. The first one is, how's the reactions been like after being doing interviews? Oh, it's been uh, super funny and exciting just to watch back everyone's interviews, seeing what they say and who they're, who they're talking about this week, which is super fun. Has there been a lot of banter at training? Oh, definitely. So I'll definitely know. I'll get some from this interview and you just <laughs> watch them and you hear out. <laughs> Maybe we might have to start thinking about what we say, but it's all about the banter. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Now, one last one, which is, what is the one thing I need to do when I come to your game? Oh, well, that dress behind you, that you should probably maybe wear that dress would be pretty good. <laughs> um, but obviously wear our colours. I know we have a tiger suit as well. That can be worn if you would <laughs> like. We have a tiger suit. We have some tiger ears. We're always willing to hire those out for, for free if you want to wear those. <laughs> oh, how do I know that was coming? Um, <laughs> seems like the whole team wants me to wear the mascot thing. I think um, that would be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, looks, looks like I don't have much of a choice, do I, when I come up there? Um, no. Well... Emily, thank you so much for giving up your time to join us. It's awesome having you on the show. Please send our best wishes to both your teams for this week because that is against QUT uh, on Saturday. And I uh, wish we were up there uh, to watch this play, mm. but obviously we'll have to postpone it due to what's happening down here. But uh, thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck and let's hope uh, you can keep the winning ways and especially set up an absolute perfect matchup between the Cougars and the Tigers uh, the following week. Yes, no, thank you for having me. It's been amazing. Thank you for being our sponsors. No worries. And that's uh, Emily there joins from the Ruby Series, uh, uh, of course, team up for, at the Corinna Leagues Club Tigers. Of course, we'll put all the details up on uh, how you can get down to Nissan Arena there at Mount Gravatt uh, for that game. Of course, uh, we, it's a late afternoon game, five and seven is their games 
on that Saturday. So make sure you get down there and support the Mighty Tigers uh, in 2021. And hopefully we'll get to see the Ruby Series, um, hopefully overtaking the top spot by not this one, but the following weekend, hopefully when they beat the Cougars. There's more on the Smashboard show right after this. Don't go away here on the 10th year celebration. <laughs> 